Hey everybody, this is Mr. Fowley, and here is about the third or fourth or fifth or sixth time that we're going to do stoichiometry and do stoichiometry and do stoichiometry and do stoichiometry. So I hope you have a calculator ready as I'm digging for mine right now in great fear as I don't see it. Um, so we're going to go over the different types of stoic calculations because we're really hitting chemical reactions hard. Stoichiometry is changing substances by converting through moles, which we've been doing all along. So the key part of uh, stoichiometry is coefficient of A over coefficient of B, and that's how you convert from moles of one thing to moles of another. Moles are found in a number of ways. Moles equals mass over molar mass. Moles equals molarity times volume. Moles equals PV over RT, where N is moles. So this one's kind of mean. V has to be in liters. Now I notice we have different things here. This it says solution. This is solution. It's a big problem on our test. This is gas. Whoops, I don't know why I put the extra S in gas. You cannot switch those just because you feel like it. Molarity does not equal MV, not for gases. People did that a ton on the last test, which I like to have extra S's in gases. All right. So when we do PV equals NRT, N is moles, P is pressure, V is volume, T is temperature, R is 0 0.08206, which is a liter atmospheres per mole Kelvin, which means it all cancels out. All right, limiting reactant. So in a limiting reactant, we need to convert each reactant into the same product. The smallest amount is the amount that actually forms. The reactant that makes the least is the limiting reactant, not the product, okay? So remember, if I ask you to identify the limiting reactant, I have to identify a reactant which is on the left of the reaction. Five grams of rubidium react with 3.44 grams of MgCl2, and they form Mg and RbCl2. Oops. Oh, sorry, RbCl, not two. Mm -hmm. We'll pretend I never did that. Find limiting reactant, mass of magnesium formed. So. Again, start with grams of rubidium. Notice I'm canceling the unit. I always go through moles. So the key part here is we're going to always go through moles, always go through moles, always go through moles, always go through moles, always go through moles. See how every step has moles in it? That's why we say always go through moles. Okay. So this right here, I get this number from the periodic table. right? Moles over moles right here. When I have moles over moles, that's going to be your coefficients. And over here, this number right here comes from the periodic table. Okay. So converting rubidium into magnesium, and I get that many grams of magnesium. Um, I want to remind you, it's 5 divided by 8.547 divided by 2 times 2.431. Divide by bottom always. Multiply by top. All right. So... 3.44 grams. Grams cancel. Go through moles, go through moles, go through moles. Notice here I have one and one because my coefficients are one and one. Yay! All right. So notice how, although these are long and annoying, they're pretty much redundant. The second half is exactly the same. So look at how this is the same. So at least it's fewer numbers to look up. Okay. Now when I do this, the smaller amount is this. This is smaller. So 0 0.711 grams of Mg form. The limiting reactant, let me change my color here. Yeah. Limiting reactant is rubidium because rubidium is the reactant. That forms the least. Whoops. Okay. So where was I? Okay. And that's it. So notice right here. It's like, well, wait a minute. This says I should be able to make 0.878. Why can't I make that much? I can't make that much because I don't have enough rubidium. So rubidium limits the amount that comes through. That's it. 
excess reactant. Sometimes we annoy you with finding the excess reactant. First thing you have to do is find the limiting reactant. Then you have to convert the limiting reactant to the excess reactant, and this is how much you need. I was right, need in big scary letters. Need. Subtract your given amount of excess, minus what you need, given minus need. And that's the excess. So 50 grams of Feckle 3 react with 52 grams of H2S to form HCl and Fe2S3. Reaction. Find the excess reactant. Grams of reactant, grams of reactant. Periodic table. Periodic table. Remember, this can start with um, moles and solutions and stuff. This is coefficients because I'm doing moles over moles. Moles, moles, coefficients. Moles, moles, coefficients. And then this is the periodic table again. And when I do this, notice this is the smaller number, which is why it gets the fancy highlighted box. Okay? The limiting reactant is Feckle 3 because it makes less. Okay? So now, when I do this, I take my limiting reactant and I convert it into my excess reactant. So notice Feckle 3 into H2S. Periodic table, big surprise, coefficients, big surprise. I think I'm seeing the pattern here. And then periodic table again. Okay. So when I do this, this tells me how much react, right? This is how much mm -hmm. I need. But the problem told me way up here that I have 52 grams of H2S. I have, whoops, have 52 grams minus need. Tells me what's excess. That's it. 100% uh, yield. Reactions never have 100% yield. Reasons. Particles have to collide with enough energy in the correct orientation every time. And that just doesn't happen, right? There's side reactions that makes the yield go down. This also makes the yield go down. Container issues, that tends to make the yield go down. Because if I try to pour something completely out of a glass, you know, I've got a glass of milk, mmm, healthy calcium, and I pour it out, there's still a drop or two left. Um, other errors that are human, um, now side reactions tend to make it go down if lost. They can also go up if add. It's often oxygen that you add. Okay. Well, sometimes it's water. So... Calculation, percent yield is actual over theoretical, or lab answer over stoic geometry answer. So theoretical yield is the stoic answer, which is math. Actual recovery, it'll typically tell you that. Okay. All right, stoic in pictures, count and compare. Little oh, baby Chucky. Each particle is a mole, we can't assume that. Coefficients tell you how they change, so write the balance reaction if not given. The reactant that runs out is limiting. The reactant left over is excess. Okay, so what do I have here? I have double pinwheel. So I have double pinwheel. And then a plus shade shady yields. I should have done this where it was needed. What do I get? I get shady colored in shady. Plus shady dot. Oops, that's an empty dot. Empty circle, empty circle. That's it. Okay. So now notice what happens here. Two of these go away. And I'm going to, so that's going to be completely used up. And notice how these are completely used up too. So that's going to be two of those. I don't have any shady ones left over. So that means they're all going to be used up. So one, two. So one, two, three, four. Six, seven, wow, seven of those. So then what I'm going to get is these. I'm going to have one, two, three, four. I'm going to have waters, which is going to be one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So if I count them all up, they will equal each other. So there's my reaction. The reaction is this guy. Excess, none. Limiting, none. Okay. 
Now this is kind of nice where it gives you H2 plus O2 and it gives you H2O. So if I have H2 plus O2 and that gives you H2O, the easiest way to do this is to balance it like you've always balanced it. Um, two here will give me the oxygens, two here will give me the hydrogens, right? So um, that's my reaction. Oops, I'll just highlight that here. I guess I should, should have put it here. Excess. So what do I have left over? See how these big guys are in there? Those guys are left over. This labels it as O2. So my excess is O2. Right? So if O2 is my excess, my limiting reactant is hydrogen. Hydrogen is my smaller one. Okay. Notice hydrogen is also smaller. And this one's bigger. Well, I guess I didn't have to label them both. I could have figured one of those out. Okay. So I've got my reaction is empty, empty, plus full, full. Yields full, empty, empty, empty. And then is that it? Yeah, the other ones are just leftovers. Oh my goodness, look at all the leftovers that I have. Okay, so I'm going to get two of these, all right? And notice how that used six of these guys. That'd be three of these and one of those. I wouldn't have to put the one there. Excess, it looks like I have both of them in excess, right? But let's see, if I use three whites for every one dark, one, two, three, one, one, three, one, I'm really going to have this as my leftover. My limiting will be my little white ones. Okay. Oops. Let's back in there. All right. Another reaction. Ooh, these guys are hard, aren't they? So, notice how these guys go away. White, black, little, plus solid black, big shady. Yield or end that's new. Big shady, little white, and oh my goodness. Are there three of them in there? Oh, yikes. So I have... Oh, I got, I got a little trouble here. This one's a little shady. This one's not. You can see now I'm not the biggest fan of these. Dark one. Shady. Shady. And then big shady wheel. Yikes. Okay. So... Let me see here. Those little shadier ones are darker ones. Okay, now we're good. Um, that one's just so hard to read. See, my problem is this guy right here comes from that guy who I thought was the same as that guy. I'm ditching this one. I'm going to say that's good enough for us. We'll squint and look at the class, maybe. And that is it. Yep, we're good. And I will say to you all, toodles.